This tutorial is on the sine law or the law of sines. And the sine law states that the ratio of the sine of any angle to the opposite side length is constant for any triangle. And there's two ways to write the sine law. This is one way. This is actually what this says here, the ratio of the sine of any angle. So I have the sines on top. So the sine of angle A divided by the length of side A. So this is angle A. This is side A opposite it. This is uh, angle B. This is side B opposite angle B. So the sine of angle A divided by its opposite length is equal to the sine of angle B divided by its opposite length equals the sine of angle C to its opposite length. Now we can also rewrite the sine law or write the sine law like this too. It doesn't matter where we have the sides all in the denominators or all in the numerators. Those are equivalent. Now we only use two of them at a time. Um, you wouldn't be using all sine A over A, sine B over B, sine C over C, all of it together to find some side or some angle. Uh, so at any one given time, we're only using two of them. So let's say we're using A over sine A equals B over sine B. So there's, there's, in this, there's two sides and there's two angles. So there's four things. So in order to find anything, you need to know, and I call this an angle side pair, uh, and you need to know the other thing that is across from what you're trying to find. So I'll get into the specifics of this below. So this is, this is what this text is referring to. So for example, to find side A, so if I want to find this one, and I'm going to talk about the angle side pair here, so if I want to find side A here, then I have to know all of these things. So this is the angle side pair. Angle B and side B would be the angle side pair I'm referring to. So you have to know side B and angle B okay, and angle A if I want to find side A. So that would be the angle pair that I would need to know. If I instead wanted to find side B, so let's say this is my thing I'm trying to find, then I would have to know angle A and the side across from it. So that's the angle side pair I need. And if I'm trying to find side B, I would also have to know angle B. So you need to think across from it. Now, let's talk about finding angles. So let's say I want to find angle A. So let's say this is my uh, thing I'm trying to find. Okay, if we're using this version here, then I'd have to know this angle side pair. I would need to know side B and the angle across from it. And I need to know if I'm trying to find angle A, I need to know side A. And then the last one, let's get rid of that. The last one, if I wanted to find angle B, then I need to know the other three things. So I need, this would be my angle side pair, angle A and side A. And if I'm trying to find angle B, then I'd have to know the side across from it. So there's always four things. You always need to know the other three. And of course, it could be they're using A and C, so we could duplicate this all for A and C or B and C, Okay, but it's the same idea. So on to the next page. So we're going to take a look at uh, uh, some examples, uh, this page and the next three, the, the last two, actually one kind of a little longer example. So in this one, we're asked to find side B. So notice we have this angle side pair. We have the uh, 81 degrees and the 18.6 across from it. So with the angle side pair here is the uh, angle A and the side A. Remember, uh, uppercase letters generally mean angles and lowercase means sides. So if I'm trying to find side B, then I would write out this version of the sign line. Of course, I could have the little A and B on top and the signs in the bottom. It wouldn't matter. So uh, here's my angle side pair I know, and if I'm trying to find side B, then I need to know angle B, and I do. See, I'm trying to find this side, I know the angle across from it. So we substitute in uh, the, all the known values uh, from the diagram. We know that uh, angle B is 63, angle A is 81, and side A is 18.6. Don't worry about the kilometers, we'll put those in at the end. So the next thing to do is to 
uh, uh, cross multiply and isolate for B. We're trying to solve for B. So 18.6 times the sine of 63. So remember, you multiply the two things on the diagonal that, that you know. And divide by the third thing. See, the sine of 81 is across from the B. So this that product gets divided by the sine of 81. And so I would uh, take my calculator and I'm just going to bring it over here. And I would go 18.6. And of course, you might in your calculator have to put a multiplication sign there. I don't have to for my graphing calculator. Uh, sine 63, but there is an implied multiplication there. And then divide by the sine of 81. Sine 81. So that's going to give me, and it would, if I'm rounding to one decimal place, like this is one decimal place, then I will get 16.8. That 7 would make the 7 round up to 8. So side B works out to 16.8 kilometers. Now in your calculator, you might want to go 18.6 times the sine of 63 and evaluate that. So this 16.57, that's what's uh, in the numerator here, and we divide that by the sine of 81. So I could then go divide sine 81, and of course, there's my 16.8 again. On to the second example. Uh, find angle B, and we're also asked to find side A. So we want a couple of things here. So uh, notice we have uh, an uh, angle side pair here. We have angle C and side C. So uh, you need, again, you need that to do the sine law. If you don't have that, then there might be some other trigonometry you're gonna, you can use. There's another law called the law of cosines. Uh, that's another video. Okay, so um, and I actually have a video too on uh, knowing you know when to use the sine law, when to use the cos law. So um, we'll get into that in another video. So the uh, angle we have is angle C. We have the side across from it. That's the angle side pair. So this is set up to use the sine law to find angle B because I know the side across from B, angle B. So we write out the uh, sine law for when we're trying to find uh, uh, angle B. So it would be sine B over B equals sine C over C, the angle side pair we know. And we should substitute in the known values next. So uh, side B is the 11.65, angle C is the 41, so 41 goes here, the 9.33 is the side C. And the next thing to do is we want to isolate the sine B. So the two things on the diagonal that we both know are the 11.65 and the sine of 41, so they get multiplied together. So we're cross multiplying here and then we would since the sine of B has a cross from it on the diagonal of 9.33 that product gets divided by 9.33 so let's bring the calculator back again so 11.65 times the sine of 41 and I have to make sure I can't just go divide 9.33 I need to put a bracket there uh, otherwise if I type this so you have to know how your own calculator works. Then what it's going to do, it's going to divide my 41 degree angle by 9.33 and that small little angle that'll be just a little over 4 degrees, it's going to take the sine of. That's not what I want to tell the calculator to do. I want to take the sine of 41 and then divide that by 9.33. So this is the decimal uh, and I always tell my students to round to four decimal places. Uh, if you round too quickly, if you just round that to 0 0.8, then your angle might be off by a degree or two. Okay, so keep some decimal places here. Uh, don't round too quickly. So there's where the 0.8192 comes from. And then in order to find the uh, angle, we take the inverse sine of this. So this is what it looks like in my graphing calculator. We go inverse sine uh, 0 0.8192. Good to always get in the habit of closing that bracket. And so that's pretty well exactly 55 degrees. Okay. So we'll put 55 in here. So that's uh, angle B. So 55 in here. Now we're asked to find side A. And I, I found angle B first because we had the side across from it. Now we can find um, side A down here because we... Uh, we, we can now find angle A. Yeah, if we know these two angles now, uh, we can find uh, angle A 
by uh, subtracting the 55 and the 41 from 180. Remember, all three angles in a plane triangle add to 180. So angle A uh, is 84. So this is 84 here. So this is, of course, A. I guess I could write that in here. I didn't put it in the power presentation, but that's an A there. So now we actually have two angle side pairs. Uh, I'm going to use the C, but you actually could use B. Um, once you find more things about your triangle, the more options you have. So there's there's two different ways I could write the sine law out here. So I'm going to use the uh, angle C and side C pair, but you could use A if uh, sorry you could use B if you wanted to. So I'm trying to find side A. So I need sine of angle A, the 84 over A equals then of B. And so here's my, I shouldn't just say it, I should write it out. So we're going to substitute our known values in. Uh, angle A is 84, uh, angle C is 41, and side C was at 9.33. So we cross multiply to uh, isolate the A. So 9.3 times the sine of 84 divided by the sine of 41. We'll uh, bring the calculator back one more time here for this example. So 9.33 times the sine of 84. Remember, close my bracket, divided by the sine of 41. 41. So it works out to about 14.1 millimeters, of course. Last example. And in this one, uh, I didn't put the diagram. So uh, sometimes you'll have some text and you'll have to draw a diagram. And it doesn't have to be to scale. Um, if you try to draw it somewhat to scale, then maybe you'll that'll help you to realize you made a mistake sometime and catch catch an error. But uh, uh, the diagram doesn't really have to be drawn to scale, although that can help. So it says ship A is 2.3 kilometers from a lighthouse. So I'm going to call uh, A the, where ship A is, and I'm call L the lighthouse. It says the distance between ships A and B, so here's my other ship. So I've got two ships some distance apart, and I've got the lighthouse somewhere else. So this is going to be my triangle here. So ship A is 2.3 from, uh, kilometers from the lighthouse, so this side would be 2.3. And the distance between ships A and B is 1.7. So wherever you have that side in your triangle, that's going to be 1.7 there. It says the angle between, now, so lighthouse, ship B, and ship A. So it goes in order. So that's going to be angle B here. So it's going to be a 66 degree angle here. It says solve the triangle to find all unknown sides and angles. So uh, we only have one angle. Notice it's across from the B side. So the uh, the angle side pair is angle B and side B. So that's the angle side pair we have. So because we know side L, we could find angle L first. You see, we don't know angle A or the side across from it, so let's leave that one alone for now. But because we know side L, we could find angle L. So here's our sine law. So uh, again, uh, angle B and side B we know. So sine B over B equals sine L over L. So let's substitute, substitute in the known values. So we know that angle B is 66. We know side B is the 2.3 kilometers. Um, and uh, side angle L is what we're finding, and side L is the 1.7. So we, we want to rearrange and isolate the sine L. So we're going to cross multiply to do that. 1.7 times the sine of 66 divided by 2.3 is what sine L would be equal to. And now we want to evaluate that. And of course, that's going to look like this. So we go 1.7 sine 66 divided by 2.3. So that value would be about 0.6752. So sine L would equal 0.6752 approximately to four decimal places. So to find L, we would take the inverse sine of that 0.6752. So inverse sine. 0 0.6752. So it's about 42 degrees. So L is about 42 degrees. So we have a 42 here. 
So now we can find angle A, and we're going to do this in the next page because we're kind of running out of room here. And of course, once we find angle A, then we can find side A across from here. So, uh, and of course, this is what I just said. So in order to find side A, we need to know angle A. So we can subtract the 66 and the 42 from 180, and that will give us 72 degrees. So let's put 72 right in here. So now we have all the angles. And so now we have uh, we have two angle side pairs, the B's and the L's. We have both of those. So it, it, uh, it doesn't matter which of them those you use. I'm going to use the B's, but you could use the L's as well uh, with, of course, A because we're finding side A. So uh, sine A over A equals sine B over B, and we'll substitute in our known values. So angle B is the 66, side B is the 2.3, uh, angle A we just found was 72, and of course we're going to cross multiply to isolate for A now. So A would be 2.3 times the sine of 72 in the numerator here, divided by the sine of 76. I guess this is my last calculation here. So 2.3 sine 72 divided by the sine of 66 gives us, and to, again, these are one decimal place, so let's round to one decimal place, so that 9 would make the 3 round up to a 4, and we would get 2.4 kilometers. So that's the length of the A side, and so now we know all the sides and angles of the triangle. And that's the end of the tutorial.